Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to take a look at Paintcraft, which is a Unity asset package which normally sells for $50 USD. Currently it's on sale as part of the Lunar New Year package on the Unity store. So that bundle sells for $30 USD. So you get this package and a bunch of other packages for less than what this one alone normally costs. At the time of recording, I think there's about five days left to that sale. So let's just do a quick overview of what this includes and then we'll get into the actual implementation and then a final thoughts on viability. So if you click on the demo folder, you'll see that there are different demonstrations and it's, it's important to stress that, that these are really tech demonstrations. You would probably never actually use these. You'd probably start from scratch, but at least you can see some of the functionality. So like for stamp brush, so not really a paint program, more of a stamping program. And basically you can just click on a stamp and depending on where you click depends on what gets occluded. So I clicked on the background, so it doesn't, it, it's behind the calf. But if I click on the calf, then it's on the calf, but not the spot. And we'll click on the spot, so on and so forth. And let's just do one quick other one. And that this is the one that most people would probably think of when they think of a paint program and one player basic. So if you run this, you have like a brush, you can choose a color, a pencil, you can choose a color, you can undo, you can redo. Okay. so. A little bit more sophisticated in one regard because MS Paint didn't have a, a translucent layer like that, but also there's other things that Paint did have. MS Paint had like uh, shapes and things like that, but there are a range of tools that are just not all baked in here, but this is what typically someone would probably think of as a Paint program. Again, more at the end as to viability. Okay, so there's a couple of demos that are baked in, but you probably want to know how to make your own. So what you do is you go to File, New Scene, and there's a couple things. If there's a directional light, you can just delete that because you won't need it. And then in the top level Paint Craft folder, navigate down to Prefab and take that Paint Craft Prefab and put it in the scene and we'll just expand this out. Now what we need, we need some configurations or else nothing will happen. So we're gonna right click, Create, and you'll have this new Paint Craft option here blank page config, you can leave the default name, that's fine. And what you do is you click on the Paintcraft canvas, so not the top level prefab, but the canvas, and you take that config that you added, you just created rather, you put it for page config. Now what happens if you make changes to this object, since it's applied to this canvas, it will make changes. So if we click on that object that we created, you can see there are settings. So like, what's the canvas size? Like, I don't know, maybe 800 by 600. And uh, start image path. So do you want there to be like a uh, image in the background that they're drawing on? Do you want like an image of a tablet? Are they gonna trace that kind of thing? Unique ID so it can save your information. So call it whatever you want. And I believe if I did not forget anything, that will let me draw the basic pencil object. So we'll run it and there you go. So already you've got the bare minimum for a paint. Now you'd obviously want to use different tools and this, uh, this package does come with different tools. Like if you click on brush pack, advanced and basic, you can see brush, bucket, crayon eraser. So definitely there's other tools there. So let's go ahead and head, head and add a couple. We're going to go to game object, UI, and we're going to go to button. And then for the button, we're going to do a couple of things. A, let's rename it ink because we're going to use the ink tool. The text on top of the button will change the ink. Now that doesn't functionally do anything. That just changes what the button says and what the button is named. That doesn't actually make it an ink tool. We need to do a few things for that to happen. So what you need to do, for this to work, you need to go to, so in Paintcraft, Engine, Scripts, 
UI controllers, you want this one, change brush. So we click on the ink button and we click on change brush. You'll see line config and brush. Okay. You need to use the line config object from up here, drag it to there. And then the brush is whatever brush you want to use. So you can, in that case, click on the little circle and then it'll automatically go to that brush folder. So like, for instance, we said we're going to use the ink tool. So we'll click on that one. And if I didn't forget anything, that should work. So we run it again. By default, it should draw with this pencil. Okay. But if I click on this, okay, it now draws this ink. Actually, minor, but I didn't actually change the text. I changed the name of the object. I didn't actually type ink, though. Now, one of the things that I noticed is when I first tested this, I thought something wasn't working right because the default ink size was enormous. Okay. So just as you have this object with configuration se settings, each tool has their own configuration section uh, uh, settings as well. So if you go to brush pack, basic, and we said we're using ink, you can click on that. You can see it has its settings. So I think by default, this was something like 50. And so it came out really large. So I thought something was broken and I emailed the uh, creator and to his credit, he responded very quickly. And uh, so it was your, you, I don't want to say user error on my part because I technically didn't do anything wrong either, but that was just the default size that by default, the ink was really, really big. In fact, it was even bigger than that. So I'm thinking maybe it was set to like a hundred. So just keep that in mind that each individual tool does indeed have settings that can be used for um, the uh, the size, like min size. So like, are you drawing quickly or are you drawing slowly? So you're looking at the, uh, you're looking at a range of sizes. And then it's just about adding more tools. So let's go. All right, so we're going to. We can copy the button. We can paste it. For some reason I have to drag and drop it back into the canvas or else it doesn't copy properly for some reason. And we can rename this one like we can call this one. Um, what other brushes do we have? Uh, let's do bucket so you can see that bucket works. So we'll call this bucket. And you actually don't have to rename this one. This one, you just really need to change the text field because that's what's being displayed to the end user bucket. Okay, and we just simply have to change this brush. So we don't have to change line config because line config is doing that. It's taking the settings and applying it to the line that is being drawn. It's just the brush that needs to be changed. So we'll go to bucket. And we'll just drag and drop. Actually, you don't have to drag and drop. Again, you could click on the circle to get to it. And again, like I said, there are settings. So let's see. Like this one is huge. So because it's a bucket. So click on bucket. And actually, that uh, did the whole screen. So I'm not quite sure why it's not doing it within the parameters already set because typically that's what a bucket would do. A bucket would set it within parameters. Uh, so like for instance, you draw a square and then it paints only within the square. So I'm not quite sure why that painted the whole screen. Something to be aware of though. And then we'll just copy and paste. So let's take ink again, copy, paste, drag it back under the canvas. And this one we will call eraser again you probably don't need to rename well you definitely don't need to rename the the text file but you do need to change the text so the, that the end user is seeing the correct message and then you just push that up and then again it's just replacing that one brush so we said what eraser 
So we take eraser and we drag it onto there. Or again, you could click here and just select it from here. And again, the eraser tool has a, a range of base settings. So what you'd probably eventually do is have an additional um, button or drop down box or something that changes these settings. Because right now you have a setting and that's it. You're going to want different settings. So if we do eraser, as you can see, it's huge. So if you change these settings, oops, eraser, you can see it's smaller. So maybe more advanced tutorials will do that, would show how you can change this. Um, I have a few thoughts, but I don't want to go into a long rambling video. I think that I've already probably run this video long enough for you to understand how this works. So within whatever it's been, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you've already seen how to use the tools they give you, how to add new brushes. I mean, just like that, we added a ink and eraser, a bucket. Again, the bucket is a little bit iffy because it just painted the whole screen rather than painting it within lines so might want to find out uh, why that happened but then there's other ones such as crayon and so on and so forth so that's really it uh, i don't think there's really much more meaningful uh, uh, I, I can do with this tutorial because that really shows you how to use this the one thing i would mention because i said that at the end i was going to talk about viability and that is that there are already a ton of free paint programs out there with really advanced features. Um, I would say that if you're looking to make a new paint program, whether it's uh, for commercially, so you plan to monetize it, or you just want to put it out there in the wild to, you know, for the betterment of society, um, if you're looking to do something like that, I would say that, you know, again, just be aware that there's a lot of free programs out there. And unless you're doing something really strikingly new, uh, I'm not sure if there's really that much viability to this. Again, it's absolutely your choice, how you spend your time, what you do. But I'm not certain that making yet another paint program really has that much benefit. Again, maybe you're trying to customize something for like a relative, a, a family member, a child, whatever, then yeah, go for it. But if you're looking to try to commercialize something, there are a lot of really sophisticated programs out there. So I'm not sure if this would really help you make a competitive product. So yeah, if you're trying to make something uh, highly specialized for like a, a family member, like the stamp tool, that kind of thing, that might be fun. But as far as commercialization, uh, I think it is highly questionable that this would be the way to go. Um, you're already kind of set back because it's being predicated upon uh, Unity. So you're using one technology predicated upon another, which creates certain issues because you're bound to how the way Unity works. Anyways, so I think that's about it. So I hope that you found this useful. Uh, I hope that this will help you make a decision as to whether or not this is something you wish to purchase. And again, like I said, the uh, the author, the creator was very receptive. When I let him know I was having issues, he responded very quickly. And so uh, that should about do it. So please enjoy the rest of your day.